Well, thank you all very much for being here and for your ongoing work. I, I share the frustration that you're hearing among my colleagues on this committee about our inability to better affect the outcome of what's happening in Burma. I understand that there have been allegations of sexual violence, um, of rape, of other actions specifically targeting Rohingya women by members of the Burmese security forces. Can you tell me, any one of you, if we have raised those specific concerns of gender-based violence with the Burmese military and the government? Yes, Senator. We share your concerns. The reports primarily coming from refugees, very credible NGOs, would suggest a wide range of abuses and atrocities, including sexual violence, violence against women and children. These are particularly vulnerable populations within a larger vulnerable population of the Rohingya. We've expressed this concern with all the, le the leaders and stakeholders. And I want to emphasize, Senator, this is not a monolithic government that has full authority uh, and the no, ability. No, I understand so, that. So yes, directly with Aung San Suu Kyi, um, we have had conversations through our ambassador to Burma, Scott Marcial, with the commander in chief of the armed forces, Min Aung Lai. We have expressed our concerns with other stakeholders, including local populations, local leaders in Rakhine State. And we have pointed out that these kind of abuses, this kind of displacement, threatens the transition to democracy, creates a much bigger risk for the attraction of international terrorism, and could set Burma back. So it's in the country's interest, not only to protect local populations, but to pave a path forward that's in the betterment of all 55 million people. Well, I, I appreciate that. Unless you have a, a different response, Ambassador Storella, I'm gonna move on. Senator Sheen, I'd just like to say that our ambassador, Marsha Bernicott in Bangladesh, herself went and visited with victims of gender-based violence so that she herself could hear their testimony. Through the support of this Congress, we are providing assistance to thousands of people who have, be, have been victims of that violence. Thank you. Um, well, thank you. I do appreciate that. And this week, Senator Isaacson and I are going to reintroduce the International Violence Against Women Act. And I think it speaks to the importance of that legislation as we look at how to address these crimes that are happening, not just, unfortunately, are happening not just here with the Rohingya, but in other places around the world. Um, I understand that. There are an estimated 69,000 pregnant Rohingya refugee women in Bangladesh. I'm not sure if that number is correct, but that um, the main assistance that they're getting is from the UNFPA, and um, I certainly support that. I support um, the efforts that UNFPA makes around the world to help um, pregnant women and um, women vulnerable women who are in need of pre- and postnatal care. I guess, Ambassador Storella, can you tell me if the administration supports UNFPA's efforts here and how we do that? Senator Sheen, uh, the United States does support efforts uh, for women who are particularly vulnerable. Uh, we are working with a number of different agencies to ensure that there are things like gender-appropriate latrines that are available. But um, we're not supporting the efforts of UNFPA, is that correct? Um, the United States um, is limiting its support for UNFPA at this time, thank you. That's unfortunate, <coughs> given the number of women in um, vulnerable positions who really need that help. Um, I don't know if any of you can answer this question, but I do know that I've heard from people um, who have, in New Hampshire and other places, who have expressed concern about why Aung San Suu Kyi has not spoken out more forcefully um, on this circumstance. Mr. Murphy, I guess this is for you. What's your assessment of the situation there? Why do you think she has not spoken out more forcefully, and what do you think would happen to that power-sharing arrangement if she did? Senator, my, my parents are residents in New Hampshire and asked me the same question. Uh, I can't speak for Aung San Suu Kyi. What, what I do know in Burma, one of the fundamental problems we're facing in Rakhine State is widespread prejudice and racism directed specifically at the Rohingya. There are also many populations that have suffered for decades from discrimination, other ethnic minorities, 
including inside Rakhine State. The ethnic Rakhine, who as I said earlier, dominate the political space, have suffered from centrally directed discrimination. It's a very complicated environment. We would like to see more champions, more vocal voices for the Rohingya and other repressed populations. And we know it's a very complicated environment. Speaking out on behalf of the Rohingya is, is a dangerous proposition right now in Burma. It must be acknowledged. I don't think that can withhold us from criticizing, from urging uh, broader human dignity and respect for each other. Our particular message is not just to the government, also to the armed forces, local ethnic leaders, but also the broad members of the Burmese nation. Reflect on your own suffering, your own voyage to overcome authoritarian rule, and think about your fellow human beings. The terrible treatment of the Rohingya is a real Achilles heel for this country and its transition. We need a broad public campaign of education for all Burmese to understand they're in this together. Rohingya are part of the fabric. They need to find a way forward for citizenship, for basic human rights. And that's a broad message. And we're looking not just for a singular champion, but for all Burmese to understand human dignity is a real important aspect to this crisis. I think that's very well said. So what kind of a message do you think it sends to if, if people? I, could I just ask one more question? As long Mr. as you Chairman. don't ask him to answer it. That's well. fine. Um, it's a rhetorical statement. <laughs> What kind of a message does it send to Burmese leadership, military and civilian, when in the United States of America, we have a travel ban on Muslim majority countries, members coming into this country? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, thank you very much. Senator